Welcome to the first unit of chapter 5. As announced in the last unit, in this chapter we will look at some more space groups and practice the handling with these famous international tables further. First we will have a look at the space group P21 over C. And this is for a very good reason. It is by far the most frequently occurring space group overall. Here you see a statistical overview from the CCDC, the Cambridge Crystallographic Data Center. At this center virtually all of the crystal structures with an organic component are collected and the respective database is named CSD, Cambridge Structural Database. Shortly it is referred to as the Cambridge file. At the beginning of this year this database roughly comprised 680,000 crystal structures and 35% of these structures belong to the space group number 14, the space group P21 over C. You can find the full statistic at the references and attachment section. Let's look at the entry of P21 over C in the international tables. Here you see once more an overview of the two pages which are reserved for this entry in the tables and we will again begin with a header. This looks almost familiar to us by now, but two things are different compared to the first example we discussed, the space group PMM2. First we see here a specification of the so-called setting. This is related to the viewing directions we discussed. The space group P21 over C belongs to the monoclinic crystal system and we know that symmetry elements can occur only in one direction and this is set by international convention as the B direction. This is the so-called standard setting and therefore the space group P21 over C is the standard space group. However, some researchers choose different orientations for the symmetry elements and the crystallographic axis and this leads to the so-called non-standard space groups. For P21 over C there are three non-standard settings. We will discuss these non-standard settings in the next unit. Second, in contrast to the space group PMM2, here the short and full notation differ. Let's look at the full symbol. The full symbol consists always of four symmetry specifications. First, again, the Bravais lattice type is specified, primitive. And then the symmetry elements that occur in three directions are specified, along A, B and C. Along the first direction there is no symmetry element and this is given as 1, identity. Along the B direction there are two symmetry elements, a 2-1 screw axis parallel to the B direction and a glide plane C perpendicular to the B direction. And finally the circumstance that there is no symmetry element in the third viewing direction is also explicitly stated again with a 1. Let's move on and have a look at the diagrams. First at the diagram with the symmetry elements. This is how it looks like and meanwhile we should be able to easily identify all these symbols. First there is a glide plane C perpendicular to the direction we look at or in other words which lies parallel to the projection plane AC. The plane is indicated and also the translational component with this arrow. The translational component of a glide plane C is of course along the C direction. Additionally this glide plane has of course a specific position within the unit cell. It lies not at an arbitrary position. In the space group P21 over C it is located at the height one quarter along the B direction. Furthermore we have these two one screw axes marked with these ellipses with the two hooklets. And finally all these small circles are centers of inversion. P21 over C is a so-called central symmetric space group, meaning that there is a center of inversion right in the middle of the unit cell 
and all other inversion centers are generated by the other symmetry elements of this group. Okay, back to the overview and maybe let's again also have a look at this general position diagram. This is how it looks like. And according to what you already learned, most of the features are easily to read. You know that these commas indicate the generation of mirror images in the case of chiral objects. This means if we carry out a reflection, a mirror image out of an image is generated, be it a reflection at a mirror plane or be it at a center of inversion. And we remember that these plus and minus signs indicate if these circles lie behind or above the projection plane. However, additionally, there are these one-halves, which are new to us, and we have to know what they mean. We will discuss them in a second, while we again will construct this diagram, beginning with only one circle, one general position, and by subsequently overlaying the symmetry elements. Let's begin with this circle. And now we can, for instance, apply this center of inversion. This leads to that copy. Because we carried out a reflection at a point, all coordinates change to the negative counterparts, not only the x and z coordinate, but the y coordinate as well. This is expressed with a minus sign. And if this would be a chiral object, then a mirror image was generated. Comma. Now let's apply this 2-1 screw axis. This screw rotation can be split into the rotation and translation part. So first we carry out a rotation by 180 degrees. So this point will come over here and this at that position. But the translational part of the 2-1 screw axis has to be applied too. This means we have to move both points by one half along the positive B or Y direction. This is towards us, the viewers. And this one half is the crystallographic short form of please add 0 0.5 to the coordinate we are looking along. So we can translate this into these calculation rules. Now we can complete the general position diagram by applying the remaining symmetry elements. For instance, this center of inversion. This leads to these copies and that copies over here and so on until we reach this complete picture. So what is the multiplicity of a general position in the space group P21 over C? Well, this is simply to infer. We just have to count the circles inside one complete unit cell. One, two, three, four. Easy. Okay, now only one thing is left that I wanted to teach in this unit. Maybe you already noticed these thin lines. They do not symbolize mirror planes. We only have a mirror plane that belongs to the glide plane, C, which is parallel to the projection plane. So what do these lines indicate? They indicate the area of the asymmetric unit. So let me try to explain this asymmetric unit. Well, we learned that by pure translation of the unit cell in all three spatial directions, the whole crystal is built. However, the symmetry elements of the space group act also on atoms inside the unit cell and will thereby be multiplied. Let's look at our unit cell. We have a center of inversion here in the middle of the cell. This means these two objects are symmetry related to each other as well as these two circles. But we also have these two one screw axes and these transform each of these both circles into each other. So it is absolutely sufficient to specify only one of these four circles to build or to derive the whole content of the unit cell. And because this circle doesn't have to lie exactly at this specific point, it can also lie here or there or over here, 
a whole area is marked as the asymmetric unit. One quarter of the unit cell is the asymmetric unit. And it doesn't matter which of these quarters you choose, they are interchangeable. And if we now inspect this quarter, we immediately see another characteristic that follows from the definition of the asymmetric unit. Yes, an asymmetric unit must not contain any internal symmetry. This is the reason why an asymmetric unit is called an asymmetric unit. Yeah, sometimes even crystallographic terms are logical. 